us things that we had never heard before. We know in the Old Testament that hell is a place. The Bible said the nations that forget God shall be turned into hell. We know that. And we know it is mentioned time and time again throughout Old Testament Scriptures. It even says that hell hath enlarged itself. Apparently, it is never full. But when the Lord Jesus Christ showed up 2,000 years ago, the lowly Galilee and the carpenter and all of that, my friend, He preached about hell. And in Matthew 5 at the Sermon on the Mount, which is supposed to be the great liberal sermon, He brought in the doctrine of hell. And He said, it is hell fire. So according to the Scriptures, hell is a place that literally exists. That's not a Baptist doctrine. That's not a Methodist doctrine. That's a doctrine of the Bible. It exists, friend. There's nothing you can do to change that this morning. Hell does exist. It is a place. It is somewhere. And it awaits those that, my friend, leave this world unprepared to meet God. Hell exists. It is a place that was created, the Bible said, for the devil and his angels. That's what the Scripture says. And the Bible says that when it was made for the devil and his angels, it was made therefore as a place of punishment, not a place to simply go to. It is designed for punishment. So the Bible says it is a place that is called hellfire. If you're very smart today, have half intelligence, you ought to be doing some thinking about where you're going when you leave this world. There's one thing that is absolutely certain, and you ought to know this. You should know it and come to face with it. Come to the facts and settle this. You are going to die. You will leave planet earth. I know you think that you're going to live forever. You like to put this out of your mind and not think of the fact that one day you'll draw your last breath. Your heart will beat its last time. There will be no more life left in your body. Where is your soul going? Are you prepared? I know you prepared your house. I know you prepared your income. I know you prepared your marriage, your children. You planned out your whole life. But you've made no plans whatsoever for where you're headed when you leave this world. Hell is a place. It is a place that existed before you were ever born. It is there. It's going to be there. And there's nothing you can do to change that one bit whatsoever. It doesn't make any difference if the churches today have stopped preaching on hell. Hell, if the preachers don't preach on hell, if the seminaries and Bible colleges don't teach the young men about hell, if they extricate it from the Bible, it makes no difference whatsoever. It is still a place that you must deal with one day. Somebody, my friend, died this morning and they went to hell. Somebody took their last breath this day, July the 20th, 2008. They drew their last breath and awakened in hell. What a shock it must have been. There are those that deny that it exists, but that doesn't change it. One day you'll lift up your eyes in hell. It's descriptive talk in Luke chapter 16. When the rich man died and was buried, and the Bible says in hell, he lifted it up his eyes. It's a, It's almost as if it says he awakened in a place that was absolutely beyond his wildest imagination. He never for one time thought that such a place like that could exist. He lifted up his eyes and hell. He became aware of his presence. He knew where he was. And from that moment on, there's not a thing he could do to change his circumstance and his situation. There is no salvation in hell. There There's no Savior in hell. There's no Bible in hell. There's no blood in hell. There's no altars in hell. There's no forgiveness in hell. Whatever goes to hell stays in hell. It's permanent. It's settled. It's settled. It's over with. What you've done in this life is what determines where you go. When you die without God, you go to hell. Hell is a place, therefore, that awaits you at the end of your life. It's waiting. It's a place that, my friend, has plenty of patience. It doesn't matter if you live 150 years. It won't bother hell one bit. It's waiting. It has much patience. For it knows that every soul lost without God that departs from this world will enter into its mouth. It will take its clutches, as as, as Joel said, and wrap themselves around it and 
pull it down into the midst of hell itself. It gives it an identity, a personality, almost like hell takes glee in the fact that those that die without God are entering into its presence. That's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago. That's why He died at the cross at Calvary. He didn't die to make you rich. He didn't die because of who you are. He didn't die to create this hell hole you know about. He died to keep you out of hell. That's why He went to the cross. That's why it's so horrible. That's why it took the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible said God made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That's why Calvary was so horrendous. Because He would keep you out of hell. There's only one name on the face of this earth that can keep you out of hell. It's not Baptist. It's not Methodist. It's not Presbyterian. It's not Catholic. It's not Jew. There's just one name that can keep you out of hell and it's the name of Jesus folks use that name day in and day out they use the word hell day in and day out they become desensitized to it it has no meaning anymore it has no punch to it it doesn't grab the soul and the spirit and that my friend was born in hell itself Satan created that you become so familiar with the word that it's just part of the average language of the, of people who walk to and fro on the street but hell is still existing nothing has stopped it it burns to the lowest hell that Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse 29 our God is a consuming fire there's holiness about God if you could go into the presence of God unsaved he would literally annihilate you you'd rather be in hell in a heartbeat than to come before a holy God thrice holy 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 dare walk into the presence of God without the blood covering your soul you'd scream for hell you'd beg for hell you'd cry for hell and yet I firmly believe hell burns because of the holiness of God.